everyone and welcome to the Art Wave Festival, a very different one this year. And this is my home studio in Northumberland. And so what I'm going to do today is a very simple boat painting. And I'm painting it from the book, Ready to Paint, Boats and Harbours in 30 Minutes. That's the book. And there's loads and loads of projects in this, so many of them. And in the back, sorry, in the front, there's the tracings for all the drawings. Lots of tracings there. Now you can either use the tracings to make your drawing, or you can just use them as a reference to have a look at. The painting I'm going to do today is this one. That one there. A few boats on, on the beach. Very simple and nothing to worry about. And get rid of that piece of paper now. And this is a bit sadly where I need my reading glasses. It's an age thing. <laughs> So what I'm going to do, start off with a bolt here, about there, and bring that down. A little bit of a curve to it there, look. End that there, and bring that around. In front of that one, I've got another boat here. I'm not going to finish that one off yet. Just cut it off there. Bring it up a little bit more, upwards there, look up, and then down. There. And that's resting, or will be, Resting on the beach. Bring that down a little bit there. On there, a little line. I'm pressing on fairly hard with my pencil here so you can still see the drawing. Another line there. And I'm painting that, drawing that one in so that. I know to leave that bit white. Now, to finish off the other bolt here, I'll lengthen that a little bit more. On there, I've got a cabin. Bit of a slope to that. And that line is coming upwards, ever so slightly, see that? It's not horizontal, coming upwards. A couple of windows in that. Don't start messing about drawing window catches. It's just a shape to be filled in. And on there, a few bits and pieces. Those are nautical terms, by the way. Wiggly bits, squiggly bits. A couple of bits here. A rail here. Don't want to get bogged down with details on things like this. Now a couple of lines in him. I'm just drawing these to denote where it's going to be different colours in the boat. Cutting in on that, got another bolt. Which is lining on its side. So you're going to see the inside of the bolt a bit there, look. And I've carried that on a little bit too far there. So that was a deliberate mistake, just to show you how you can put things right. Now, that's the end of the bolt. 
That's the inside of the other one. Notice that line's coming inwards. And a base trim there. I'm sticking fairly much to how the painting is actually in the book. I'm not making too many changes. There's some Rolex. Get your Rolex in. Ooh, uh, missus. And a couple of oars leaning against the boat there. Now I've got a bit of another boat there. Just sticking out from the front of him. And there's a cabin going the other way on that one. Always nice to have some verticals when you're doing boats. Masts, sorry, masts. And all the gubbins that goes on on boats. And I'll just have another one there. I'm going to cut one boat out. Bit of a boat there. And now behind this lot, I've got a cliff coming out. Bit of grass on top of that. Or it will be grass. And here's my water coming out in the distance there. Just a line to show where the sea's gonna be. The sea's gonna be. And that well, more or less do. There's a few more bits and pieces. There's a boy there. There's a few more bits and pieces going to be in this, but I'm just going to paint those, not draw them. Like there's going to be lines, ropes, and all kinds of stuff come from these boats. But I shall just paint those in. Okay, I finished with that, and I'm going to put the book away now because I'm just going to use the colours that I want. Oh, it's time for the sky wash. And the paper I'm using, by the way, is called the Lantern Rough. It's got a lovely rough surface to it, a bit of a tooth to it. Get some nice textures on there. Uh, Lantern Rough, it's only 140 pounds weight, and I don't pre-stretch or mess about with it. Just, I chop a sheet in half, because I get the really big sheets. Tape it to the board, and it's ready to go. And so to start with, my big brush, one and a half inch wash brush, Slap some water on there. All the way down. I'm not going around the bolts, apart from the easy bits, which are easy to miss, I mean. Um, which is the cabins just there. Just go around those. The masts and stuff like that. Don't bother, go through them. Plenty of water there. And the main colour, well, actually the only colour in this sky, I'm going to make it a really simple sky, this one. A little bit of ultramarine blue. Plenty of water into this. Remember, it is going to dry nearly 50% lighter than when I put it on, so allow for that. Plenty of water, plenty of blue, and bring that down. Like so. So, so simple. Wash out. Squeeze out. And mop it up. And again, wash out, squeeze out, mop up any drips, get rid of those little drips, as my mother used to say. Now, wash out again, squeeze out, and for some clouds, very, very simple, just squirrel that brush around a bit, like so. Squirrel, new technical term. 
Wash it out again, squeeze that. Mopping up, keeping control of the water there. Wash out, squeeze out, take out. That's your mantra. Wash out, squeeze out, take out. Add a little bit more there. I'll take that one a bit higher, actually. There. All I'm doing is sucking paint out of the paper. If you use kitchen roll, which is the common one for clouds, the kitchen roll will suck the paint down all the way down to the paper, leaving you with a big hard white blob with a sharp edge. And it's unnatural looking. This way it's softer. If I wanted cloud shadow in there, as I'm sucking paint out like so, look. Drop a bit back in. A hint of cloud shadow. And that will do for that very simple sky. One last mop up. Now, my sky is more or less dry, not quite, but it's dry enough to carry on painting. The brush I use for the sky, my one and a half inch flat wash brush, and these are Aquafine brushes. And strictly speaking, they're students' quality brushes, but they hold a heck of a lot of water. Really good brushes, I love them. And as you can tell by the state of my handles, I also use them for my acrylic painting as well. Same, same brushes, and they're good and sturdy. They'll stand the hammer and the abuse that I give them. So I've finished with that one now. So now it's to my three quarter inch flat. I only use four brushes in total. I'll tell you about those at the end. So I've got a little bit of yellow ochre here, plenty of water into this. It's a bit of yellow ochre. And I don't want this distant cliffy bit to be too strong. Cliffy bit, that's another technical term there. Bring that down there like so. I don't want it to take over in the painting. that down to about there, that'll do. Now, a little bit of raw umber. Raw umber, the only brown I use. So raw umber is a nice standalone brown. Put a touch of blue into that, I've got sepia. Put a touch of burnt sienna into my sepia mix. I've got Van Dyke brown. Take the raw umber and burnt sienna together. I've got burnt umber, I've got four different brown from one tube. A little bit of blue. Ultramine blue, because that's a blue of my sky. A few touches of that in there as well. All oh, white, well, still wet, but I didn't pre-wet it. It's the first wash that's wet. Now, stroke it, stroke it. Don't make it too complex. And now, on top of that, Yellow ochre, still with that three quarter inch brush. Put a yellow ochre there, look like so. Now, yellow ochre mixed with Hooker's Green. As I always say, Hooker's Green is a fabulous mixer, but don't use it by itself because it's unnatural. But mix it with every color you've got in your box, you've got loads of different greens. That's a bit of grass on top of the cliff. Now, for my shadow, ultramarine blue, of course that's the blue of the sky, touch of alizarin crimson, and a touch of burnt sienna. So it's quite a dark colour, but it's a warm colour. And I'll put that at the base of the grass, look, where it meets the cliff. Now drag a few touches down. So, so simple. Don't fiddle and don't mess. Wash out, squeeze out, and just with a clean damp brush, again, stroke down. And that's my cliff done. Now, I can start on the boats. Now, I've changed to my number eight round brush. Again, 
same brushes, Aquafine, and these will hold so much water, even though that brush is only £2.50. I think it's £2.50, isn't it? I think so. Something like that. Um, so they'll just hold a lot of water and they'll keep the shape nicely as well. You see that anyway. Here's a little bit of blue, ultramarine blue. And I don't want this little boat here too strong. Blue there. When I say don't change your blues throughout the picture, I mean for anything natural. If it's man made, like if one of these blokes was cobalt blue, that's fine. But I think anything natural, don't change your blues. That's a little bit of ultramarine blue there. I'll leave that for the time being. Now I'll have a little bit of brown, raw umberlook. Bit of that. Mixed with a touch of burnt sienna. Make it into burnt umber there. Fill that bit in there. Once you've done the drawing, this is the easy bit. Because now I'm just filling in my blocks, stage by stage, bit by bit. Section by section. And underneath that, we'll have a little bit of light red. Leaving a little strip of white in between the two colours. Look, there. Isn't that easy? Now, I'll have a little bit of a lizard and crimson. And you see how quickly this starts to come together now, once you've got the drawing done. And just putting the colours on. Lizard and crimson there. in there. All I've got to be careful to do is not touch one wet colour with the other if I don't want them to run in together. All the way across. Of course for the um, Art Waste Festival as well there's the trail of the birds, painted birds. And these are little sculptures of birds that various artists have painted on. And I've done one for the festival as well. So hopefully you will have seen him in a shop nearby in Bridlington. That's if you live in Bridlington. Just fill in there. A bit more down there, and around the base. And these are all just the base washes that I'm putting on the bolts at the minute. And then I shall go back and put any, de any detail in later. Now, like I said about changing your blues, I'm going to have cobalt blue for this. Because this is for a bolt. Cobalt blue around the top of it. And for the back. And the seat bit in the middle. Well, you all see those. I always think they're seats anyway. And the thinner bit coming around here. Now, this one here is brown on the top and green on the bottom. So I'm going to use raw umber. A bit of that. And a touch of burnt sienna into the raw umber. Like so. And now a touch of ultramarine blue. So I've made the nice rich Van Dyke brown there. All the way to the back and nice and strong here. Can you see what I mean now about these, water, these brushes holding a lot of water and a lot of paint? That's just one dip after the initial mixing. 
and I filled in that whole boat. There. Now I'm going to leave that little bit white. Underneath there, I've got a really dark green. So, hooker's green. You see what I'm talking about, about it being unnatural by itself. Look, there. Now, put some burnt sienna into it. There. Nice and strong. And leaving a little strip of white there. And again, this is just one dip of the brush. And I've filled that whole lot in with one dip. Easy peasy. Now it's time to start and put some detail into these. And these cabins, I want one side light, the other side darker. Light's coming from here. So I've got Ultramine Blue and a touch a burnt sienna into it and plenty of water and all I'm doing just block in those sides there look like so and a little bit on that one as well notice I've painted around the windows but I can still see the paint the pencil marks underneath A little bit more burnt sienna into that mix now will give me a dark for the windows. A bit there and a little bit there. Bigger window on that one. Once I put that mark in there, now just with a clean damp brush, spread it downwards, just with water. Like that. Not like that, just like that. Isn't that simple? Now you can see a bit of the inside of the boat, you see. And I just want to leave that for a second now, the detailed bits I'm talking about. And I'm going to go back to my three quarter inch brush. And I've got Ultramine blue, because that's the colour of my sky. Tiny touch of hooker's green. In there. And now, tiny touch of burnt sienna. That's for my sea. All I'm doing, just fill in my horizon line that I drew. With the sharp edge of my three quarter inch brush. Now, carefully around my boat. Notice I've painted through those oars, but I can still see them. So that wasn't a deli deliberate mistake. It wasn't a mistake. A little bit more water into the same brush full of paint. Spread that forward. But I shall show you how to show those oars again in a minute. I know exactly what I mean by that. <laughs> Carefully around those again. Bring that forward a bit more there. And again, just a clean damp brush. Moving that around now. And again, wash my brush out again. Stroke through. Clean damp brush. Bring that further forward here. Leaving bits of darker showing through. And let that settle for a bit now. Now I've changed to my rigger brush. Again, Aquafine brush, but this is a number four rigger. And 
I've got Ultra Beam Blue and Burnt Sienna mixed again. Ultra Beam Blue, Burnt Sienna, a little bit darker this time. Just make sure I've got a clean hand, because I'm going to put my hand on the paper now. And all I'm doing, filling in the masts, sorry, masts, and the squiggly bits here and there on the boat. Just a straight draw downwards. Now a few little bits and pieces on the tops of the cannon. Like I say, I, I've done about four books for the public for my publishers, Search Press. I've done about four books on boats or boats and harbours. And everyone just assumes that I know lots about boats. I don't. I don't know anything about boats. I just do them because the publishers ask me to do them. Or tell me to do them. So my nautical terms are squiggly bits, wiggly bits, and gubbins. That's all bolty terms. Bit there, mm there. I don't know what any of these things are, apart from their masts. There's a little rail at the back of that one. All with the rigorous. And by the way, have you noticed, I haven't dipped in again. That's all from the same dip of paint. A few jiggly bits here and there. A few bits and pieces on those. A couple of windows there. One, two, two there. All with the same dip of paint. These Aquafine brushes are just brilliant. I like them so much I bought the company. <laughs> I didn't really. I'm just talking rubbish. Yeah, a few jiggly bits in bolts. I'm going to dip into that same colour that I've just used for the masks again and have a few strokes in this boat here just to give the impression that it's made of wood. I don't need solid unbroken lines, it's just a few lines here and there. down here and still with that boat a little bit of my raw umber and blue mixed a little rollocks in there and I was telling you about if I want to reveal those oars again if I want to light on those oars now that sea or swathe of colour that I put in for the seat there is now dry, so if I wash out my three quarter inch brush, look, squeeze out, and just take some paint out. Wet it first, look, now you can see it coming out. It's not that important to be honest, but just in, if you wanted light on something. That. All I'm doing is sucking paint out of the paper, but I keep washing my brush out, squeezing out, in between strokes, so that I'm taking paint out, rather than just moving it around. You see that now? Another one here. One more time, I think. There you go. Isn't that simple? Now I shall paint them on the underside. So, just with a little bit of black. Now, I don't use manufactured black. Make your black look. Ultra Bean Blue. Burnt Sienna. Isn't that simple? Ultimate blue and burnt sienna. Another nice way of making black is hooker's green and a lizard and crimson. That will give you a nice black as well. And there, underneath there, stroke downward. There. 
Even I went quiet for a second then. Reinstate my Rollocks. <laughs> Little things are mean to me. Now I'm going to go to the shadow in the box. So back to my number eight round brush. And I've got again that mix. Can you remember it? Ultramine Blue, the Lizard and Crimson, and Burnt Sienna. I've already got Burnt Sienna in there. Plenty of water into that. A bit more Burnt Sienna, I think. Yeah, that's better. And all I'm going to do is think about where I want shadow on the boats. So where the tops of the cabin meet the cabin will have a line underneath there. It's just like painting a building. You would have a line underneath the roof. Again on there. Now, just for the clean number, soften that line down slightly. Like that, see? And again there. Within the window, have a bit of shadow there. See? And again, soften that down. Now start and give the bolt a bit of shape. So with the shadow again, we'll have underneath the top edge, the white bit, we'll have a dark bit. Now shape it as I'm coming round here. Look, watch, you'll see what I mean. Bring that down, like so, curving it round. Now, more water into that brush and soften that in. See? Now come into the white bit. See, just giving that bolt a little bit more shape. And a little bit underneath there. And a bit down there. Like that, squeeze out, soften that line up a little bit. Whenever I put a hard line in, I'm then softening it out. And the same on the other bolt. A little bit underneath there. Curve it round. And a little bit on this one. And curve it round. Wash out, squeeze out, soften. There. Now there's going to be quite a bit of shadow from the boats on the beach. But I haven't got the beach painted yet. A little bit of shadow in there. Underneath the lip at the top. And round here. Wash out, squeeze out, and soften. And the same on this one. And I've run out of shadow mix. You know what this business people tell you? When you mix a mix, always mix plenty because you'll never repeat that mix again. What a load of tosh. If you run out, mix some more. God's sakes. A bit more blue. There. Done. Plenty of water. And underneath that one again, underneath the top bit. And again, bring that down, curve it round. Soften the brush. Soften it in. There. Now, time for the beach. Now, back to my three quarter inch brush again. 
but it's time for the beach. And I'm starting off with a little bit, there's a, there's a few colours going in here actually, but I'm starting off with yellow ochre, and you water into it, and bash that on. Bash, there's a technical term again. Now carefully, don't ruin all the work you've done, carefully underneath my boats, and around my boats, I'm not bothered about that little boy there. Is it boy or buoy? I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those, isn't it? A bit more in between there, look. And through here. Now, notice I haven't filled it all in down here especially. A little bit of raw umber. Plenty of water into it. Here now, look. and again, a bit more raw umber. Leaving yellow off the shine through here and that. And around that. Now, a little tiny touch of light red. Plenty of water into the light red. You don't want much of it either. Hint. Just warms it up a little bit. Now finally, touch of blue. Plenty of water into it again. Wash out, breathe out, and soften those paints together, those colours together. And I just need that to dry a little bit more before I put the final touches, which are all on the beach. Now, that's more or less dried, dried enough anyway. So I've got a little bit of a Lizroom Crimson here, there, and some yellow ochre into it as well. Mm. So I've made it more of an orangey colour. And all I'm doing is just fill that boy in there. Like so. And then at the end of it, you've got like a little black spot. <laughs> it's that bit that you tie it on with, I suppose. Um, to me, it's a little black spot. So, ultramine blue and burnt sienna again. And have that little bit in there. And that's all with my round brush. Now, take out a little bit of light on that side of it. See? Now, with the shadow on the bolts, again, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna. I don't mean on the bolts, I mean cast from the bolts. What I'm going to start with what I have. A little bit of dark there, which kind of like grounds it. Underneath the bolt there. I'm just going to soften it a little bit. Hmm. See what I mean? That ties it down to the ground. Now, sh shadow, sorry, shadow cast from the bolt there. And that one. And then in there. And a little bit in front of it as well. Might be a bit of shadow cast from that bolt on that one. I don't want to put something in there. Once you put in shadow in, just think about it. Look for where the shadow needs to go. You've decided where your lights come from. Now make it show with the shadow. And I'll swim underneath there. And there, and then 
gas from those behind that bolt there. Now that one will cast a shadow on that one. That one will cast a shadow on that one. And a bit of shadow from that one there. Easy peasy. But it's the shadow that makes all the difference. Now the boy, yeah, boy, whatever. <laughs> boy, boy, we'll cast the shadows there. We're more or less done there, folks, apart from with my rigger brush and Ultramine Blue and Burnt Sienna. We'll have some ropes. There's one there. Coming through. And these ropes can lead you into the painting as well, if you squiggle them like that. Another one here. Bring it around and squiggle it out. And again here from these. Do I have a bird? Or three? There's one. Two. Three. And that is that one done. And there we go. That's not too difficult really, was it? A few bolts and a big flat bit. <laughs> I know I always make it sound easier than it is, but really anyone can do that. Just practice, practice, practice. That's what makes it. Everything I've done, everything that I use is Dale Rowney. The paper I've used, like I said, that's Langton Rough. This is a small part of it. It comes in various size pads, but that's a small part of it. Uh, Langton Rough, lovely sturdy paper you can really give that stuff some hammer and it's only 140 pound weight so it's not an expensive paper all the paints that i used excuse me fiddling about down here all the paints that i used are all aquafine paints again dale around the aquafine paints there's a few of the colors that i've just used um lovely colors these on my website are only one pound eighty a tube but they're fabulous paints. They've actually, these days, put natural pigment into students' quality paint. So it's really good paint. Dale Rowney, Aquafine paint. Again, the brushes, Dale Rowney, one and a half inch flat, three quarter inch flat, number four rigger, and a number eight round. Four brushes, that's all I use. And I can use those for my acrylics as well, which I do. Um, so everything's on my website. Have a look, charlesevansart.com. Uh, and also, if you want more videos, uh, check out my YouTube, YouTube channel, which is Charles Evans Art. And the book, of course, is that one. Boats and Harbours in Watercolour. Ready to paint in 30 minutes. Lots of projects in there. Have a look at them. Hopefully you enjoy this Art Wave Festival. I know it's very, very different, but there's still plenty to do and still plenty to see online. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.